Okie dokie. So welcome to our first lesson on power series. And this is where things really start to get interesting. So in our last couple units, we've talked about how like infinity isn't always infinite and zero isn't always zero. And it's because we're dealing with limits, we're not dealing with real zero. And infinity is a concept. It's just something that, you know, grows forever and, and grows without bound completely. So sequences and series kind of get at both of those two things all over again. So the first thing we talk about to kind of lead us there is we talk about power series. So a power series is an expression of the form a sub n um, equals a sub 0 plus a sub 1 plus a sub 2. Basically, any type of uh, function here, any type of expression here, and as you plug in n, you get a whole bunch of terms, okay? And those terms can be numbers, they can be letters, they can be a little bit of both. But really what you're going to notice here is they're all separated by pluses. So a power series is really an infinite series um, that's the sum of an infinite sequence. So one of the things we talk about is convergence or divergence. So when we talked about convergence or divergence of a sequence, we were looking at the limit as n approaches infinity of a sequence like n plus 1 over n minus 4. And we said, well, if this represented a sub n, does this sequence converge? So as n goes to infinity, this goes to 1. And we'd say, yeah, if I wrote this out as a sequence, which is a bunch of commas, the terms would approach a value of 1. But when I talk about convergence or divergence of a series, I'm really asking when you add everything up, does it add up to infinity or does it add up to a certain value? All right, so a series is called convergent if the sequence of its partial sums has a limit as n approaches infinity. Okay, so what are partial sums? Here's what we're going to do. So let's say I ask, does the series 1 half to the n converge? If so, to what? So this big sigma basically tells you that a series is a sum. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug in different values for n and write out the terms of the series. So when n equals 1, this is 1 half. When n equals 2, this is 1 half squared, which is 1 fourth. When n equals 3, I have 1 eighth. When n equals 4, 1 sixteenth. 1 32nd. Whoops. Let me fix that. Where's my eraser? 1 32nd. And so on and so forth. So what are partial sums? Well, partial sums are when you just add up part of a series. Because technically you can't add up an entire infinite series because there's an infinite number of terms. So we say, all right, S sub 1 is going to stand for partial sum number 1. And it means add up one term. Okay, I'm done. There was no adding to do. It's only one term. So I added up one term. I got a half. S sub 2 means add up the first two terms. Okay, now we're talking because I'm, you know, actually adding this time. A half plus, plus a quarter is like two-fourths plus one-fourth, which is three-fourths. Okay, cool beans. The third partial sum, add up the first three terms. So a half, a fourth, an eighth. And that's going to be, well, the half and a fourth is the three-fourths. Three-fourths plus an eighth is like six-eighths plus an eighth, which is seven-eighths. Okay, fine. S sub four, my fourth partial sum, is going to be, well, a half plus a fourth plus an eighth, which is seven-eighths, plus the next term, which is one-sixteenth. And that's going to be fourteen-sixteenths plus one-sixteenth is fifteen-sixteenths. And then S sub 5 is going to be, well, that 15 sixteenths plus the very next term, which is 1 32nd, which is going to be 31 30 seconds. So a series converges if the sequence of its partial sums has a limit. Well, let's look at the sequence of the partial sums. A half, 3 fourths, 7 eighths, 15 sixteenths. 31 30 seconds. So if I were to write S sub n, where n is the nth partial sum, I want to think about the pattern I see. Well, the pattern I see is 2, 4, 8, 16, 32. Those are all powers of 2. It isn't 2 squared 4. It isn't 2 cubed 8. So my denominator is always 2 to the n. And my numerator, 2, 1, 4, 3, 8, 7, 
to 16. But the numerator is 1 less than the denominator. So this is going to be 2 to the n. Take away 1. So what's the limit of the sequence of partial sums? So what's the limit as n approaches infinity of 2 to the n minus 1 over 2 to the n? Well, as n goes to infinity, I get infinity over infinity. But really, aren't these the same thing? This is kind of like when you have the same degree on the top and the bottom. I'm just going to look at the ratio of the coefficients, which is 1. So the sequence of partial sums is approaching 1. Therefore, the series converges to 1, which means that the sum of 1 half to the n is n equals 1 to infinity. If I actually could add an infinite number of terms up, I'd get 1. Okay? Crazy weird, but basically it's the idea that you can keep adding stuff and have a limiting value. All right, does the limit negative 3 to the n converge? If so, to what? Okay, we're going to do the same thing here. So I'm going to look at the sequence of partial sums. So first I have to write out the terms. So negative 3 to the first is negative 3. Negative 3 to the second is positive 9. Negative 3 to the third is negative 27. Negative 3 to the fourth is 81. Negative 3 to the fifth is negative 243, and so on. So if I look at my partial sums, S1, S2, S3, S4, first term is negative 3. If I add up the first two terms, negative 3 plus 9 is 6. If I add up the first three term, I have 6. Technically plus a negative 27 is negative 21. Add that to 81, I get 60. Add that to negative 243 and I get negative 183, I think. Is this going anywhere? No. I can't even write a rule for this. So for something like this, I don't, I don't know what the, the partial sum is going to be toward the end, but I can tell you it's going to start getting bigger and bigger and alternate between positive and negative. So the limit as n approaches infinity of s sub n for whatever, oops, for whatever s sub n is, I'm sure there's some kind of formula for it, but I don't really care because I don't need it. The limit of the partial sums doesn't exist. Therefore, the summation of negative 3 to the n from 1 to infinity diverges. So this series converges, this series diverges. Okay, now on to the really important stuff that we come back to over and over and over and over and over and over and over again, geometric series. So that first series we saw was geometric because if I look back at it, one half, one fourth, one eighth, we're multiplying by one half each time. And if you're multiplying each time, it's geometric. So a geometric series are the sums of geometric sequences, so they can be put into a form where you have a times r to the n minus 1. And you need to know that in that setup, a is your first term, and r is your common ratio. Okay? Common or constant ratio, it's, it's the multiplier, basically. Now, there's a rule. A geometric series will only converge if r is between 1 and negative 1. So basically, if r is a fraction between 1 and negative 1 or 0, it will converge. Okay. If r equals 1, it's going to have to diverge because let's say I take something like 4 times 1 to the n. Well, that just means I'm going to be adding up a whole bunch of 4s. That can't converge. 4 plus 4 plus 4 plus 4 plus 4. It's going to get huge. But if I did 4 times 1 seventh to the n, 4 sevenths, 4 forty ninths, 4 over 343, it's getting smaller. So whenever r is between positive and negative 1, a geometric series will absolutely positively converge. So when the absolute value of r is less than 1. This, by the way, means the same exact thing as that. I just want you to see it in two different ways. So when the absolute value of r is less than 1, the sum of a geometric series can be calculated using this formula. The sum of a convergent geometric series will equal a over 1 minus r, where r is the first term and r is the constant ratio, and this only works when r is between 1 and negative 1. 
got to remember that. This is a great formula, but you can only use it when r is between 1 and negative 1. So how are we going to use it? Well, right now, we're going to use it to say, well, what if I wanted to find the sum of the series defined as 6 times 1 third to the n minus 1? Well, if I want to find the sum of the series, the first thing I want to figure out is, can I even find the sum? So step one is, is it geometric? So is this geometric can be answered by writing out the terms and seeing if they have a constant multiplier. So when n equals 1, this is 6 times 1 third to the 0 for when n equals 1. So 6 times 1 third to the 0. When n equals 2, it's 6 times 1 third to the 1st. 6 times 1 third to the second, 6 times 1 third to the third. So this is going to be 6 plus 2 plus 6 ninths, which is 2 thirds, plus 6 twenty sevenths, which is 2 ninths. So let's see, is this geometric? Multiply by a third, multiply by a third, multiply by a third. Yeah, this is absolutely geometric. Once I know it's geometric, I know it has the potential to converge, but I know it only converges if r is between 1 and negative 1. So we just said we were multiplying by 1 third each time. So r is 1 third. Is r between 1 and negative 1? It's definitely between 1 and negative 1. So now I need a, the first term. That was 6. Therefore, since n, I'm sorry, since r is between 1 and negative 1, I know that the sum of 6 times 1 third to the n minus 1 can be calculated by using this formula of a over 1 minus r. So 6 over 1 minus a third is the same as 6 divided by 2 thirds, which is the same as 6 times 3 halves, which is 9. Okay. Quick break for a second here. What just happened? Well, what happened was I had a geometric series, and I wanted to find its sum. So I know from what we talked about up here that a geometric series only has a sum if r is between 1 and negative 1. So I wrote out the terms and said, okay, what's my r? My r is a third. A third is between 1 and negative 1, so to use the formula, I also need a, the first term, a over 1 minus r gets me the sum. All right, so let's try it on this one. This looks geometric. It's got an exponential, so I need to figure that out. Hold on, I have to pause this. Okay, so where were we? We were right here. So we were saying that... Do, 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 do. There we go. I want to find the, the sum of this, and it is geometric, I think, but I can't be sure until I write out the first couple of terms. So when n equals 1, I've got 5 times negative 4 thirds. And when n equals 2, I've got 5 times negative 4 thirds squared and 5 times negative 4 thirds cubed. This is definitely geometric. I mean, look at that. It's totally geometric. I'm multiplying by negative 4 thirds each time. It's like practically slapping you in the face. So for this, r is negative 4 thirds, is negative 4 thirds between 1 and negative 1. If you're not sure, that's negative 1.3 repeating. Oh, wait, no, that's not between 1 and negative 1. So the absolute value of r is not less than 1. Therefore, this diverges. Nothing else to do here. Nothing else to see, nothing else to do. Done. All right, I got another exponential down here. Ooh, but there's a 2n. That's weird. So maybe it's not geometric. I'm not sure. So let's figure it out. n equals 1. I got 8 times 0.5 squared. n equals 2. I got 8 times 0.5 to the 4th. I got 8 times 0.5 to the 6th. Ooh, wait, I think this is geometric. Well, in fact, I know it is geometric. 0.5 squared. 0.5 to the 4th, 0.5 to the 6th, I'm multiplying by 0.5 squared every time, right? And 0.5 squared is 0.25. Is 0.25 between 1 and negative 1? It's definitely between 1 and negative 1. So r is 1 fourth, also known as 0.25. a is the first term. 8 times 0.25 is 2. So the sum of 8 times 0.5 to the 2n is n equals 1 to infinity is a over 1 minus r. So this is going to be 2 times the reciprocal of 3 fourths, which is 4 thirds. 8 thirds is my sum. 
All right. Now, some of you may have been thinking before, well, wait a minute. Don't you know A and R right from this setup? Well, yeah, I did in this one because this was set up nicely as A times R to the N minus 1. But not all geometrics look like that. They can still be geometric without looking like that A times R to the N minus 1. They can kind of hide in other forms. So if any of you were like, maybe I can find a shortcut. There are shortcuts, just not without writing out a first couple of terms. Okay, so very last one. Two exponentials, hmm, what does that mean? Well, for this one, if I write out my terms, when n equals 1, this is going to be negative 1 to the first times 0.7 to the second, negative 1 squared times 0.7 to the fourth when n is 2, negative 1 cubed when n equals 3, so now 0 0.7 is to the sixth. So what did I multiply by each time? Well, we multiplied each time by negative 1 and by 0.7 squared, which means negative 0.49 is R. Does that make sense? Every time negative 1 went up by a power, and every time 0.7 went up by a power 2, so my R was negative times uh, 0.7 squared, negative 0.49. So R is negative 0.49. And A is the first term, which is negative 0.49. So A over 1 minus R is going to give me, when I put it in fractional form, 49 over 149. Okay. Um, technically, that's a negative. Pardon me. Because really what happens here is you have negative 0.49 on top, and then you have positive 1.49 on the bottom. So if you multiply the top and the bottom by 100, it just moves these decimals. Boop, boop, and there's my sum. All right. Okay. So, well, what, what, what can we do with this? Why do we study all these sequences and series things? I'm at 17 minutes here. Well, why do we study all this? Because of what's coming next. Ready? A series is defined using an x. For what values of x will the series converge? And for those values of x, to what does the series converge? All right, ready? Here's the really cool part. Pen. Here's my series. When will it converge? Well, first I should write out the terms of the series, just like we've been doing. So when n equals 1, I have 7x to the 0. When n equals 2, I have 7x, uh, not squared, 7x to the 2 minus 1, 7x to the 3 minus 1, 7x to the 4 minus 1, because I put in values for n, which makes this 7 plus 7x plus 7x squared plus 7x cubed. Is that geometric? It's absolutely geometric. Something is geometric if you multiply by something each time. What are we multiplying by each time? We're multiplying by x, right? So this is geometric, and our constant ratio is x. And for what values of x will it converge? Well, it will converge whenever r is between 1 and negative 1. So this converges when x x is between 1 and negative 1. All right, so for those values, to what does it converge? Well, if it converges, it converges to a over 1 minus r. So it converges to 7, the first term, over 1 minus x. Now, at this point, this just looks like, okay, Mrs. Bibber, you gave us answers. No big deal. Here's the Big, 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 big deal. Ready? That means that the summation as n equals 1 to infinity of 7 times x to the n minus 1 can be written as 7 plus 7x plus 7x squared plus 7x to the third and so on. And it converges to 7 over 1 minus x. Wait, what? What that means is... If x is between 1 and negative, nope, I didn't mean to write that. If x is between 1 and negative 1, this function is exactly equal to that function. 
Wait, wait, what, Mrs. River? That means if I go into y equals and I type in a polynomial, 7, 7x, seven 7x, seven 7, seven, seven, and I type in 7 over 1 minus x, and I graph them, here's the polynomial. Here it comes. This is on a window from negative 2 to 2, by the way. Okay, here's the polynomial. Do, 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 do. And there it goes. And ready? Here comes my other function. Where is it? Where is it? I don't even see it. Here it comes. <gasps> Look, they, they touch right there. Well, that's kind of cool. Now watch what happens. If I change my window a little bit, I'm getting so excited. If you change your window, come on, go to 30. And if I were smart, I'm going to go back into the y equals here, and I'm going to put the little blinky thing on y2 so you can see it trace a little bit better. Come here, blinky. There's the blinky turtle tracer. Okay, so if I go back and I look again, come on, calculator. Here's the polynomial. Do, 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 do. My baloney has a first name. It's O-S-C-A-R. My baloney has a second name. It's M-A-Y-E-R. Because Oscar Mayer has a way with B-O-L-O-G-N-A. I had to sing something. Okay, so there's the polynomial. Here comes the rational expression. Oh my goodness, between one, I'm sorry, negative one and one, they look the same. Now outside that window, they're not the same, but they're not supposed to be. What happens is through geometric series, you can model non-polynomial functions as polynomials. Holy cow, that's cool. Get it? Holy cow, it's a cow with a little, you know, halo. Holy cow, that's really, really cool. Okay, so you do not need to do the homework down here. We're going to do that together. But I just wanted to show you the awesomeness that was power series and geometric series. And last but not least, we need a joke. Um, the joke is, where does a general keep his armies? In his sleeves. And since I know a lot of you have heard that one before, What's uh, what do Winnie the Pooh and Alexander the Great have in common? The same middle name. Think about it. <laughs> okay, I'm done with you. We will talk again soon.